Hello everyone, and welcome to Bigfoot Cooking. Yes, I know, Chef is usually here right now, but he's running late. He's out getting his toes done, getting a little pedicure. Some people just have all the posh things. Now today, we're making quail eggs. See these little guys? <laughs> They're cute, but they taste really good. Now we'll start doing the cooking once Chef gets here. I'm not cooking eggs today, but he's gonna fry these up. Oh gosh, we're... We're going to make them fried, sunny side, poached, hard boiled, and even cold smoked. And I'm sure Chef has other tricks as well. Who knows? This is his show. I'm just stalling for him. Oh, I hear him now. Let me go get him. Okay, hey, sorry I was running a little bit late. I had something to do that wasn't a pedicure. About time you got here. I'm here, all right? So now let's get started on these quail eggs. Now, if you look for size, check this guy out. He's just so cute. And when you compare it to a chicken egg, well, there's quite a difference there, is there not? But I got one better. How about duck egg? Ooh, big old thing right there. Yeah, it may take quite a few of these to make what this guy does, but they pack a pretty decent punch. So why don't I go ahead, get this cleaned up, get this thing fired up, and let's start out with the simplest of all a fried egg. Now, unlike a traditional egg, you really don't want to tap this on the side and crack it. They actually make a tool that will pop the top off of these and make it easier. It's actually a quail egg cutter. It's kind of like a cigar cutter. You could use that if you really wanted to. You could take a knife and lop the top, but in this case, we're going to take scissors. I'm actually going to take the pointy part of the scissor here and let's see, let me get this guy over here and let me show you. We'll just take the top of the egg Kind of put it into the corner here and just doop, pull the top off. Well, maybe pull the top off. This one's wanting to be aggravating. But there's your little egg. We'll just dump it out. Boop. You have one quail egg. Now, if you have a garden, make sure you save your shells because you can use them as fertilizer. So into the save pocket. So now let me get this thing lit. I actually like this little thing. You know, there's every pro chef you see is like quick to pull one out. I've been resistant because it's in my camping gear, but you know, it's not that bad. I mean, you've got the little cylinder which goes right in here and it tucks away nicely. You really, all it is, you lock it down with this lever here, turn the valve on, turn it hard, tick, and you have fire. Turn it down nice and low. It does run really hot. So again, if you're out in the woods camping, it's great because it's got a, a real hot flame to it. I'm gonna let this kind of warm up right here and then put a little tallow on it. That's right. I don't know if y'all watched my other video where I made the tallow, but I tell you what, as far as like frying eggs and stuff, tallow is basically beef fat. And well, it makes a great cooking medium apparatus. It's pan lube. We'll set this on here. Once this gets all up to temperature, we're gonna fry an egg. Now, when you go to fry a quail egg, make sure you're ready because literally 10 seconds on one side, 10 seconds on the other. Don't believe me? Let me pour this thing in right here. And that's almost picture perfect right there. Look at it, the edges are already coming up. It's setting pretty doggone quick. Let me scrape this guy over. All right, ain't want to cooperate. We'll give it another 10 seconds or so. Yeah, we're actually doing this one real time. So that way you can see, oh, it don't take it that long. You want it over easy, over hard, over and out, however you want. Boop. And there you go. A little salt, just a little. They're so small, you really don't want to salt them beforehand because, well, you, you ain't got much to work on, man. And that's it, a little bitty egg. He's so cute. But yes, I know. The real question, how does it taste? That's right, this is like one of the earliest taste tests I've had in this show, so. Cheers, y'all. Okay, not bad. I mean, it's simple, it's it's an egg. It's just a little bitty, it's cute. So now, I showed you the easiest way. The second way, sunny side up. Same procedure. Right. We've got our next egg ready. We will just easily and gently pour this guy right in there. And if you look, you can see where the lace is growing on the edge. Yeah, they're so little, this really doesn't take long to, to fry up at all. 
and we're just letting it go just until the the middle white I know there's like the white on the edges the middle white and then the yolk we're letting this go until that pretty well sets and then off it goes and I've got this flame really low because it's easy to burn these <laughs> the smallest sunny side up egg I've ever seen in my life and the same treatment as before pinch of salt oh, that was a heavy pinch of salt a little pepper it's gonna be your runny yolk and you know the cool thing about this you literally eat the whole egg in one bite. You just kind of come up with it. It's got a nice, you know, if it's a pizza crust, you got that little dangle off the end. Well, this ain't pizza. This is quail. Enjoy. Hmm. Okay. Tastes like a, actually, it does have a different flavor to it than a regular egg. And it's really good. It's, I really don't know how to describe it. Everybody's got their magic. It's, it's the unami flavor or this or that. It's just got a really good flavor to it. So there you go. There's you sunny side up and fried eggs. Now let's do poached and hard boiled. All right, so now time for the poached. Now there's many different ways on whether you put vinegar in the water, not vinegar in the water. I've heard of poaching doing your poached eggs, even in like chicken broth, beef broth, just to kind of give it a little bit of flavor. With your quail egg, they're not in there long enough to absorb any of that flavor. So I think some of it would be wasted. So before I snip the top off of this, I wanted to point out that this one egg has about 15 calories in it. So if you're watching your weight and you know, you I ate a whole egg for breakfast, well, there's your 15 calories. Eat all you want at that point. All right, I've got the water where it's nearly boiling. That's where you've got the little bubbles at the bottom, but they're not popping up to the top. Now, of course, you I don't know if you've seen where they do the tornado and you put it in there and that way you get it all nice up. Actually, if you take your time and just take the egg and slowly put it in here, it's also going to give you a poached egg. For this, it only takes about 30 seconds and boom, you're done. All right, come out, come out wherever you are. Eh, it's a little jiggly. I think I'm gonna leave it in just a touch more. All right, and there you have it. One poached egg. Now notice there was no stirring or going crazy or anything. Literally just set it in the water and let it be still. Worked out perfect. So ta-da, poached egg. Now, let's do hard boiled. All right, for our hard boiled egg, what we have here is our angry water. And I'm gonna take and put a a little bit of a pinch of a salt in here. That way we kind of condition the water for this. And from here, well, I have plans. So I'm actually going to take about six eggs and we are gonna hard boil them. Now, if you wanted to make like a soft, soft hard boiled egg, does that make sense? A soft hard boiled egg, you take about a minute and a half in the water and that's it. Boom, you've got a, a soft boiled egg. Now, if you went about three minutes and 30 seconds, well, that's a hard boiled egg. I'm gonna run these about two and a half minutes. So gotta pay attention to the time. Now, because I don't want carryover heat to keep cooking the eggs once I get them out of here, I've got cold water sitting right here. So once we get our two and a half minutes done, they pop up out of here, slide over here, and they sit and cool down. That's right. You don't want, you don't want to overdo your eggs. They're little, remember? They, they don't have a big margin for error. You know what's bad? My live studio audience has uh, gone through a whole pack of these eggs. So fortunately, I got a second one. So we are ready to keep the recipes going. All right, time's up. Time to cut off the hot tub and get everybody out. Cause that's right, pool closed. Let's see. Got five out, five in. They're doing the polar bear dip now. That's right, we're moving them from the equator to Alaska. So we'll give them, tell you what, I'll clean all this up and we'll just let them sit in the cold water and then let's see how well these turned out when I'm done. You know, the funny thing is they didn't shrink or grow in hot or cold water. They stayed the same. So now the shells on quail eggs are actually not that hard to break. They're, they're pretty simple but that little membrane that goes around it, it's tough as shoe leather. That's the one you gotta work on. And of course you do your typical kind of push and roll and crack the shell all the way around and basically now, peel. Yeah, this is the tough part. 
Ta-da! Now you know it's funny, when you're doing this just for you, it's a lot easier because you're not worried, oh, I nicked it, I tore it. But when you're doing this to make it, you know, appear on a camera, this sucks. It's a little tougher. So now we got our eggshell here. Let me get another plate. Let's go ahead, slice this guy open and see how the yolk looks after, after it's, uh, its trip to the spa. We get on in there. There you go. There's your not quite liquid, but soft boiled egg. Tell you what, let me get a little bit of salt here. Just a touch of pepper. So that's a nice thing. Eggs actually don't take much to like turn them from good to great. Just two little seasonings and lo and behold, it's a boiled egg. It's a good boiled egg. It's a boiled egg. There you go. See, quail eggs really aren't any different. It, it's not any different to cook these eggs than it would be the bigger eggs. Just your cook time is way down. But now where this stuff is going to shine is in my next two recipes. Oh yeah. Wait till we get them going. Huh. All right. So now we're out here on the smoker. I got my other one busy. I'm making a little biltong in it so we can't use it. So I pulled out the old crusty dusty one. Works good for this. You could actually cold smoke in a wooden box. There's just that low of a heat. Now we've peeled six eggs. Yeah, I didn't figure you guys wanted to watch me peel six eggs. But I got six eggs peeled and in here, in my smoke tube, I have about, it's about a five hour burn if you fill the whole thing up. So I've got about two hours of apple wood in there. We're gonna light this guy up and just let it do its thing. Cold smoking is so easy and it adds so much flavor. Now I picked these guys up on Amazon. It came as a two pack, even came with a brush for cleaning it out. And it came with a extra little baster in case you need a silicone baster. So we're gonna let this guy smoke for a while, let it go. Now, when you like this, if you've got a little bit of a flame, let it burn for a minute and then just blow it out. Poof, you'll get that lovely smoke. And from here, we're gonna leave our eggs right there. Not, not directly on top of it, because we don't wanna cook them. They're already cooked, we boiled them earlier, remember? I don't want them to cook, but I do want the smoke to infuse its flavor in it. And so, well, we will just let it sit right here for, I got about, like I say, two hours of smoke. We'll let it do its thing for two hours and we'll check back on it later. Now, while we're waiting on those guys to cold smoke out there, how about something a little different in here? How about spam? That's right, not the email, but the actual food. How they got based together, I, you tell me, we'll both know. So for this, I got a can of Spam and I've got about five eggs. So step one, let's open up the can and let's dice this puppy out. All right, I messed myself up, I cut this wrong. I meant to have six pieces here, but I got four. So now we're gonna take our, what, maybe inch thick pieces and a little spoon, and we're gonna hollow out a well that's about the size of a quail egg. Just a little scoop on the outside, coming in from both sides, make it a little football shaped. And what you do with the extra piece, well, that's up to you. All right, I'm gonna take one of the pieces that I cut wrong and let's see how well it holds together. This is our science experiment here. So now that we have a well in all of our little spam nuggets, now let's go ahead and take our egg and fill that there well up with some quail goodness. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. You know what has surprised me so far is I haven't been like delicate with these, but I haven't been rough, but not a single yolk has broke on me. So I'd say they're pretty tough. So now that we've got all our wells filled, we're gonna take, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a cast iron pan and we are gonna bake it in the oven for 350 degrees, for 350 degrees. We're gonna put it in the oven for about 15 minutes at 350 degrees. So let's see, I'll set this guy here. And of course, what does every little ham and quail need? Well, it needs cheese. So let's set a nice heap of this here Mexican blend cheese on top. Now, if you wanted to make this a little bit spicy before you pop the egg in there, you could have put a little jalapeno or some of the, the red pepper flakes, whatever you want. So now let me bake this for 15 minutes and let me show you what we get at the end. There's my studio audience. There's a piece of spam. Does she catch? Yep. Right on cue. And then I get the puppy dog eyes for more 
seriously. All right, believe it or not, I actually gave it a few minutes to cool down. We're gonna take our uh, attempted one where we put two of them together, which actually seemed to stick pretty good. And let's go ahead and slice into it. We're gonna cut the cheese. We have us some stretch and some cheesy filled spam bites. I guess that's what you'd call it, spam bites? I don't know, let's call it dinner. You know, I ain't gonna lie, it's been a long, long time since I've had spam. And I really don't know what the big negativity about it is. It definitely tastes better warm than it does cold, but actually with a, you know, quail egg and some cheese, this is not too shabby. So, huh? y'all are kind of missing out. Actually, y'all are really missing out, that's pretty good. So the spam turned out pretty good. Amazingly, I mean, I haven't had spam in years. So now let's stuff some mushrooms. That's right, quail eggs and mushrooms. Ooh, we getting fancy. This one's gonna take a little bit of prep, but it's really not that difficult. Step one, fire. Get ourselves a little tallow on it. And while that's warming up, we're gonna take our mushrooms, pretty good size ones, cause you gotta put a quail egg in them. We're gonna pop the bottoms out of them. Oop, about like that. We'll go ahead and do all of those real quick. All right, now from there, we're gonna need a little bit more room than this. So we're gonna take and carefully trim this out just a little bit. That way we've got room for the egg and the stuffing. All right, see, nice big bowl right there. Let me go ahead and do all of these that way. And we're saving what we're cutting out because we're gonna dice it up as well. All right, now that we have ourselves five little mushroom bowls and this is warmed up in that time, let's go ahead and put us in a little bit of a fresh onion here and get it going. Now while the onion is frying, let's go ahead and take the stems that we had in the mushrooms and we're gonna dice them up kind of about the same size as the onion. All right, we've got our onions to loosen up a little bit. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our shrooms, not those kind of shrooms. We're gonna take our shrooms and slide them in here as well. And we're just gonna do one clove of garlic. Nothing too, <clears throat> nothing too crazy, just a little bit of extra flavor in here. Just like that. And I love this press. You should check out the link below. And of course, as the mushrooms are cooking down, can't forget a dash of Worcestershire. That's right, that's the, I think that's the right way to say it. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, just something to bump up the flavor a little bit. Now that we've got this cooked down and I'm telling you, the whole house is smelling really good. We'll pull this off, set it to the side, and then we'll work on uh, putting it right back in the mushrooms. All right, so now what we're gonna do, you know, it's funny, this is all that's left out of two whole things that cooks down to just this. Get us a, a little bit of scoop. Like I say, you don't wanna go too crazy with it because this is an enhancement, not the whole meal, and you only have so much to go around. So I'm gonna get me about a, a small spoon serving's worth here and basically grab our mushrooms and well, just put a little bit in there. Now, if you fill it up this full, you may not have room for the quail eggs. So be, be frugal in how much you add to each one. So let me knock that out real quick. All right, now that we've got them all stuffed, it's time to take our quail eggs and cut them open and just add one egg to each one of the mushrooms. You know, they just, they look, they have a nice little presentation to them. And, they're not hard to make, they just take a little time for the setup. Now from here, I'm gonna put them in the oven. I got it set for 350 and we're gonna bake this for 15 minutes. Now, if you wanted to, I'm gonna do a couple of these with and without, but I'm gonna take a little bit of cheese because well, everything's better with cheese. But we're gonna put just a touch of cheese in this. See, the cheese also works good if your yolk isn't quite centered. Well, you can uh, cover it up and no one will know. So now, into the oven for 15 minutes. Be right back. Ooh, look at there. Don't that look kind of cute? Now I'm gonna let these guys cool off until I even cut into them. So for now, we're gonna let these sit. And yep, our smoker has finished smoking. So let's check on our eggs out there. All right, so we got about two and a half hours. And like you see, I can place my hand right on top of the smoker. Really no heat added at all to it. And when you peek at the eggs, oh, they're no longer white. They now have a, a little bit of that smoke color to them. Oh, these are gonna be absolutely legit. So let's take them back inside where I can take my knife and do a little slice and let's see how deep the smoke went, if this thing literally has a smoke ring or not. 
Mm -hmm. We got our smoked eggs from the outside. Now, before we get into addressing those, I really want to try this while it's still warm. I don't want to let this cool down too much. So I'm going to take this guy right here without the cheese, although I really want the cheese, but we're going to try this guy here. We're just going to slice into them. Normally you would just bite into these, you know, more of an hors d'oeuvre thing, but well, I want to see how we look. Ain't that cute? The yolk set up all nice and pretty and everything. The mushroom baked down brown and well, just like Harry Houdini, watch it disappear. Scooby's down there already asking for a bite. He ain't getting it. This is actually pretty good. It's a neat little party hors d'oeuvre. Takes a little bit of work, but not too shabby, eh? Hmm. Hey, right, enough about this. This is this is this is not too bad. I tell you what, that's some fancy eating right there. But I want to see what's in the quail eggs. All right, smoke time. Let's see. We're gonna go a long ways with this guy. I'm just gonna slice into him really slow here. And let's see. Yeah. It actually does have a smoke ring. It's kind of small. Let's see. Let me set it up right here. Hopefully, hopefully I got that on camera. Look at there. There's actually a little smoke ring that's set inside of it. That's really cool. And of course, what do you do with these guys? Well, you eat them. <laughs> you ever had smoky boiled eggs? These are pretty good. Now, the best advantage to this, get you a little salad, set these guys up in here. And when you serve them, well, the people are gonna go, oh, what's that? And you can say, oh, just a little egg. And they'll bite into it. And then they'll be like, hey, why does it have an applewood flavor? Oh, well, because we fancy around here. That's right. Little bitty applewood eggs. Mm. So let me put all this stuff we made together into one shot and let's kind of close this video out. And there you have it. Ain't that pretty? Set up a display just for this shot. Now, how else do you want quail eggs? I mean, this is probably 80% of the way you eat your eggs anyway. I mean, we got everything from fried, sunny side up, poached, hard boiled, maybe in spam might not be something you've done before, but cooked in spam with cheese on top. We've stuffed some mushrooms and we made a smoked hard boiled salad. Now, if you can get quail eggs in your area, I really don't see a reason why you don't want to give them a try. They're really good. They're tasty. They're cute. So like, you know, for feeding kid, you're, you're feeding kid sized food to adults. There's just some humor in that right there. But as for me, I'm going to take the salad because believe it or not, I really am digging these smoked eggs and I'm going to go eat. So you guys take care and don't forget. Bigfoot's probably going to eat the rest of these because Bigfoot is real. All right, believe it or not, I actually gave it a few minutes. Cuckoo. Let's open up the cam and cam. So step one. And of course, what does every uh, ham and cheese sandwich need or ham and quail sandwich need? <sighs> So drop these next four in because I need a bunch of hard-boiled quail eggs. I do indeed. Everybody needs hard-boiled quail eggs, right? 